Good evening. Good evening. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for coming out on a kind of blistery night and uh, to uh, join together with us. Um, I'm going to go kind of right into the service uh, order, but uh, later in the service, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story because we're all sitting on this side tonight. Okay. And thank you, uh, thank you for that, and uh, thank you for for being here and joining us, uh, sharing together. Um, <clears throat> this evening, uh, from before, um, we are uh, praying as is on the front of the bulletin uh, with aroma therapy, and uh, we had talked about anointing uh, before, so there is a anointing word in the top of there, but uh, we will be sharing, uh, as we have been during Lent in the prayer, um, with aromatherapy tonight. The greeting is in your bulletin. If we could share uh, that as we begin. The love of God poured into our hearts, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So then let us pray together. O oh God, rich in mercy, full of kindness, out of your great love, you have raised us up from sin and death and make us alive together with Christ. Write your word upon our hearts and restore in us the image of your love, that by your spirit, our way of life may become the way of Christ, through whom we pray, amen. Let us take a moment, as we have done at the beginning of our Lenten worship, uh, to just center ourselves and uh, think together and individually uh, as we sit with one another. Let us have a time of silent prayer. The hymn for our beginning together this evening is in your worship book number 338, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Let us join together.
The scripture this evening is from the 12th chapter of St. John, and uh, the, uh, actually the bishop was here this last Sunday, and, and this text was uh, one that she used with uh, us in the confirmants, uh, so we have some background on that and appreciative of that. Um, in the season of Lent, we move from Ash Wednesday uh, through the season of Lent toward Easter and uh, toward the time of Jesus' passion, uh, Jesus' suffering on the cross. And this is a prelude to that, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my thought for this tonight. But let us read from John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this, that is Judas, because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As the keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In your bulletin, uh, just a reminder of our journey, and uh, I think it's good to, to look at that the prayers of Lent this season, and we appreciate the uh, effort of putting these together and working toward our trip into Jerusalem. The centering prayer of faith, the sung prayer for mercy, the, the bidding prayer for compassion, a prayer with movement and forgiveness, and the prayer with aromatherapy that I'll be talking about tonight as a gift of thanks. So in the bottom of the page, it says, In Christ Jesus, we meet the God who knows our weakness and bears the wounds of the world. Sue's going to be sharing with us this evening, so thank you, Sue. Oil in the Bible has great significance and symbolism. Originally, the oil was used exclusively for the priests and the tabernacle articles, but its use was later extended to include kings. In today's world, essential oils have many uses. What I found after reading up on the subject was a way to combine a God-given part of nature, essential oils, with my prayer life. Inhaling calm and grounding essential oil centers the soul, preparing your mind to be thankful and positive and creative. You can explore, experiment, and find the combination of oils that inspire, encourage, and help your soul find rest when you pray. In the back of the church, I have four different samples, some, just some oils on a, on a cotton ball for you to, to use with this, and there's some instructions on what to do to close your eyes, um, to inhale deeply, to exhale, to use deep breathing to quiet your heart and regulate your body. You will find that as your body relaxes, so does your mind and your heart. So if anybody wants to give it a try, there's some samples in the back. Thank you.
So thank you for continuing on this journey during our Lenten time, uh, for being participants to hear and see and smell and taste uh, together the journey uh, of prayer and the journey of faith. Jesus um, had come from the north country of Galilee and uh, in his ministry there, he uh, had been a teacher, one who had called his disciples into greater commitment in his mission and ministry. And then it was time for him to head to Jerusalem. That was not an unexpected thing. Jesus himself had talked about his journey to Jerusalem in a kind of mission-oriented way. But actually, he was joining hundreds and perhaps thousands of Jewish people who were going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover meal. So it was a usual journey for many of them to come from about 80 miles to the north down uh, to gather in Jerusalem. Jesus had been at the house of Lazarus and his sister Martha and Mary. And when we talk about this Mary, we're, we're not talking about the mother of Jesus, but rather the friend or um, one of his close women or woman disciples. So as Jesus comes to the house of Lazarus, he had been there maybe a week or two before. And it was at that time that Lazarus was taken gravely ill and had died. Jesus was saddened by the death of his good friend Lazarus and his disciple, disciples Mary and Martha. But when he was there before, in his care and in his power of being God's son, relied on the Father and called Lazarus to come out of the tomb to new life again. What an amazing time that was. So in this gospel text that we have here, we see that Martha is busy serving and uh, we are thankful for her example that is left with us. And Mary is a different example that is left with us because Mary takes costly perfume, nard, or uh, something that is used in preparation for death. And uh, she had that and she wants to do something special for Jesus. And she takes the costly perfume, which could have been used also to anoint his body for death. And yet she uses it as a thankful gift, perhaps that Jesus had called Lazarus her brother back to life again. Now we should stop for a moment and recognize that uh, Lazarus was not raised as Jesus will be on Easter Sunday morning into a new eternity. For Lazarus will die. And uh, the gesture that Mary gives is to perhaps foreshadow in some ways 
Jesus' death, even though she may not have recognized when she was doing that what gift she was giving to Jesus. It says that she took the perfume and washed or wiped Jesus' feet with them. The fragrance filled the house. John was the last gospel to be written um, and some maybe almost a hundred years later than the other gospels. John was a young man when the events of Good Friday and Easter first took place and uh, he wrote uh, out of his experience to talk about this particular event. And in, and in the parenthesis here it says Judas who would be the one to betray Jesus later. Judas wanted the money put into the purse, not necessarily to give to the poor, but that he might borrow, quote unquote, some of that money for himself. And that is one of the things that the gospel kind of talks about and, uh, and is concerned that Judas was one who would betray Jesus. I believe that Mary's gift of the scent of the perfume and the expense of that was a gift of thanksgiving. It was a special time that she could say to Jesus, thank you for being a friend to us in our family. Thank you for my brother, brother Lazarus and his gift of new life today. Now, scholars and different people uh, look at the story in different ways and, and think about it. I'd like to contrast a little bit this evening with that Thanksgiving that she takes the perfume, puts it on Jesus' feet, and wipes his feet with her hair as a very thankful gesture uh, for Jesus' gift to Lazarus and to the family. As Jesus is coming to Jerusalem, I said that they will be going to the Passover festival. And we had a couple Sundays ago um, the example of Jesus at the Last Supper as recorded in the Gospel of John by this young man of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. And we had a fun time with our young people as they were uh, experiencing the washing of the feet by Jesus, the Master. John is the only one who does not record the words of institution for the Lord's Supper in his gospel, but chooses to record Jesus taking off his outer garments, Jesus kneeling with the disciples in a basin to wash their feet. Normally, the job of a servant or in some translations, the job of even a slave in the household. So John records that instance of Jesus doing something special and calling attention to that. Knowing from the other gospels, we know that in part of preparation for the Passover meal, the prayer would have been given. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples. And after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink. So I think that when we think of this aroma of the 
perfume for Jesus, and we understand that in the context of the uh, trip to Jerusalem and on Good Friday, the trip to the cross that Jesus would take, we see that it is a thanksgiving that Mary is giving her friend Jesus. The thanksgiving that Jesus says is part of the gathering together of God's people and that the perfume which is used, we have seen as a perfume to bury the body of the crucified Christ. And Mary says, thank you to Jesus and anoints his body with a special perfume. I'm thankful for that gift that Mary was able to give to Jesus and Jesus acknowledges that and says, I am thankful don't, uh, to Judas, don't, don't uh, give her a hard time. <laughs> and uh, later we'll know that he asks us to be servants to one another and to anoint or wash the feet of our fellow disciples on our journey ahead. So Mary is an example of thankfulness for the gift of Jesus who died and who rose again. So we come to the end of our Lenten journey. I want to say thank you to those who have participated in sharing during this Lenten time and uh, have helped us to think of our prayer life and its meaning as we approach Holy Week, beginning with this next Sunday. Thank you as we join together. Amen. At this time, we will have uh, our offering and as we've had each uh, Lenten evening. And uh, then we'll conclude uh, with prayers and uh, we'll just have a few announcements uh, after uh, we receive the offering. In your bulletin, I'd like to just uh, call your attention, uh, as I had already read at the bottom of the left-hand page, the prayer for Lenten worship, and maybe you'd like to make sure you bring that home with you to remember back over this journey we have taken for these six weeks, uh, including um, Ash Wednesday, and uh, kind of maybe think of those things and put them into practice uh, in your own life as we continue on into the special week of Holy Week, uh, which is in front of us now. I want to say thank you again to those who have participated uh, in different parts uh, in present presentations uh, of the prayers and the meaning of those things. And uh, Sue, thank you for tonight. We appreciate your sharing with that. 
and uh, for the others who have been part of that during this time, as well as for music and uh, special gatherings together. And we appreciate that the conferments tonight are um, in uh, Baldwin for the silent messengers together with other young people um, at the Covenant Church there, and, uh, Reformed Church, I'm sorry. And uh, so they're not in the front pews over here tonight. So then you all came over and sat over here graciously. Thank you. <laughs> So this is the story, okay, and, and uh, Sandy, I don't know if you know them, but the, I served Christ Lutheran Congregation in Eau Claire, in Eau Claire excuse me, in Menominee uh, for 13 years, and it was an uh, interesting time to, to be there with, with that congregation. That church building, uh, they started with a first unit, and then they moved into a, a, a kind of a worship experience in the round, and it had... Uh, a center aisle and two two side aisles that uh, were there, and um, most of us, me included, uh, kind of when I go to church, I have a place that I sit. Okay, and uh, for Joan and I, often when I were at our Saviors, which is our home congregation in Amory, um, we sit on the right side, up in about the second or third pew, and. And I, I like that because there's a space in front of me that I can stretch out my legs, okay? <laughs> and so that's, it's kind of the short view on the front there, but uh, we do that. So when I was preaching one Sunday in, <clears throat> in Menominee, uh, I was doing, looking around like this, and, and uh, the Neverdolls, I don't know if you know the Neverdolls or the members of the congregation there, and I looked over here where the Neverdolls were supposed to be, and they weren't there, and they're always there. And I looked over here, and they had moved over here. And I said, my goodness, I've got to stop. I'm, I'm discombobulated. I, <laughs> the Neverdolls are not where they're supposed to be. <laughs> anyway, the, the thing is, thank you for being willing to move uh, this evening and to share and, and to do that. We, we are pretty much creatures of habit. Uh, in, in some good ways and maybe sometimes not as good, but I appreciate that you were willing to move tonight and, and uh, I will expect some of you to be on that side uh, next time we do that. Please note, Palm Passion Sunday is this coming Sunday and uh, we uh, celebrate the uh, coming of Jesus into Jerusalem and the events that unfold during Holy Week and uh, end in the passion of Good Friday, Jesus' suffering and death. And so we invite you to Palm Passion Sunday, this coming Sunday, Holy Thursday, with the uh, communion, as we mentioned, Jesus instituting for us the gift of Holy Communion. And uh, that will be done on Holy Thursday, as well as stripping the altar uh, for preparation for worship uh, on Good Friday, and that's at 7 o'clock also, 7 o'clock on Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. Friday with words from the cross by members of our congregation. So we hope you will come and join us for those times. And then Easter Sunday, uh, we gather together in person at 9 a.m. for our Sunday morning resurrection celebration uh, with the gift of Holy Communion. And... Uh, Joining us for that uh, Sunday will be uh, our retired uh, former pastor, Keith Anderson, and uh, I'm looking forward to having Keith being able to share with us uh, for that time on that Sunday. So please invite your family, please invite your friends uh, to join us uh, during this special time that we might be a blessing uh, to each other as we gather together. So we'll join together the concluding prayer uh, in your bulletin. Let us pray together. God of compassion, gather our prayers in your mercy and grant us what you know we need, that we may walk in the life and the peace of your spirit through Jesus Christ, our hope and salvation. Amen. And we join together in our Lord's prayer in the traditional version. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And then we join together in uh, the final hymn, uh, number 324, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. And let us sing tonight the three first stanzas as we conclude our Lenten journey. Stanzas one through three, number 324. If you will stand, please, we will receive the blessing of praying together. This is in your bulletin. Let us pray together. Christ Jesus, dwell in our hearts through faith as we are being rooted and grounded in love, strengthened by the Spirit, and filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.